welcome to our March episode of Art Conversation, hosted by National Association of Women Artists Nova. Our today artist and Nova's member is Laura Waller. Laura, welcome to our conversation. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you for accepting to be um, our guest and artist for the month of March. Um, all right, so let's start the conversation by you introducing yourself and telling us about yourself, how you become interested as an art and artist and how you started as an artist. Okay, great. Well, I've had three careers in my life. I started as a therapist for 11 years, then became a financial planner for about 35 years. And now I'm in my third career as an artist. I began my love of art through a love of art history when I was at college at Tulane University in New Orleans. And at times I still feel that my favorite artists are sitting on my shoulder. Um, sometimes I feel like Frankenthaler or Morandi or Monk or Schiele or Diebenkorn are actually on my shoulder helping me do what I do in my studio. Um, while I was oh, a financial- oh, your angel, right? Sitting on your shoulder and just leading my, you? My, my muses are sitting there. Muses, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm an autodidact, um, somewhat like Picasso, Kahlo, um, Russo. Um, but while I be, was working as a financial planner, I started taking watercolor workshops as a way to get away from the stresses of the stock market. Um, you know, when you're painting, you're in a zone and you don't think about all the pressures that are going on around you. Um, when I sold my practice to my son in 2012, I went full-time into art. At that point, I switched from watercolors to oils, probably because I felt that um, it opened um, a larger audience for my work. Um, than just doing watercolors. Um, when I switched to water uh, to oils, I switched to water mixable oils because I had had a history of having breast cancer in the past and didn't want to deal with as many chemicals as I thought I would have to um, cleaning up with turpentine and whatever. So I went to water mixable oils. Mm -hmm. um, once I was a full-time artist, there were three major influences on what I was doing. The first was I studied one-on-one -on -one with a wonderful oil painter in Bath, Maine named Tina Ingraham. And Tina also shared a love of art history. So she would, at times we'd be working in her studio and she would bring in art history books and show me how different artists had treated the same um, process that they were trying to get across. And we learned that way. The second major influence on me is a, an oil painter was doing a residence, different residencies at Vermont Studio Center. Um, being exposed to the MFAs, and most of them were recent MFAs, I learned that painting was more than technique. Um, painting also meant that you had to think about what it was you were trying to portray in your art, why you were doing it, and it made a, had a very profound impact on what I was doing. Mm -hmm. The third influence on me as an artist was by Charles Reed. He was a watercolorist who I took many workshops with. But what he said that was profoundly important to me was he said that you need to paint what you see, not what you think you see. So that, you know, for example, lots of times people are, if they paint a face, they'll draw an oval. Well, Charles Reed taught me instead of that, just paint the shapes I see. And in this first painting I did, which is not shown here, but it was of horses at a horse race in Tampa, Florida. He said, you can paint this, Laura, just paint the shapes you see and then connect them up and put them um, underneath each other where they, where they belong. And voila, there was a horse race. Mm -hmm. um, what I've realized through all of this is that art is really autobiographical. And what I'm trying to do is to share what I'm seeing, really seeing with others. And I think a really good painting somehow gives the viewer a feeling of the connection between the artist and the painting. Because without that, it's just a wonderful rendering of a scene or of a thought. Um, so maybe a clue as to what really that means is to think about certain paintings allow you to stand in front of them for a long period of time to get lost in them, to come back to them, 
kind of like I had an experience when I was just out of college and went to the Met in New York and fell in love with this huge painting they had at the time in the lobby um, done by Bastian Lepage. He was not well known at that time, but it was of Joan of Arc. And I have gone back to see that painting maybe 50 times over the years. And that's that connection that I think a really good painting somehow allows the viewer to have. When I'm so, working, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, what type of art you are known with today? Um, art in terms of style, subject, in terms of media? Yeah, well, when I first went out um, as an artist, I met with a consultant, Barbara Hill, and she's, and I was living, I live in Tampa, Florida, and half the year in Maine. And in Tampa, where I'm a resident, Barbara said, you're a Florida person, you need to start painting something that would appeal to Floridians. Mm -hmm. And I told, I told her that, you know, I don't want to paint beach umbrellas and palm fronds. It's been done. It's been done very well. And she said, well, you know, what about painting the port of Tampa? And I said, well, you know, I think of the port and I think of um, cruise ships. And to me, cruise ships are like hotels with rudders. So she said, well, what about the working port? And that struck a bell with me, um, maybe because I'm from a working class family or whatever. But all of a sudden that sounded intriguing. And so I was able to go into the port on a Sunday morning with my son in his powerboat when there were these huge behemoths that were tethered to the shore and I fell in love with them. Um, if you're looking at this, this is a, a photograph in my studio in Maine. And if you look at the top row, you'll see some of the paintings that I did of the port of Tampa Bay. Um, and what's, what was interesting to me is that, um, you know, it, we live in a city of Tampa and have this magnificent port that's one of the largest ports in the country, and you don't even know it's there. It provides about 70,000 jobs for people, and we don't know it's there. We, we don't go into it. So I felt really privileged to have the opportunity to get in there and, um, and to kind of paint these um, scenes from close up. I'm a person who likes to paint angles. So if you look at the paintings on the top, like if you look at the yellow ship from to the right, uh, one over from the right, that's the Tangicosium. And it's a, a ship that was in our port for a few weeks. Um, what I loved about it is that I had, it was just an angle that I shot the photograph of and somehow I had to make the ship curve so that you got a sense of what was behind it on the left-hand side of what you're looking at. Um, that was intriguing. Why, why, sorry, um, uh, I interrupt you. Why you like to paint or draw angle? Why this perspective? Yeah, I think it's because it's more interesting to me, particularly with the port and the big ships, mm -hmm. by not having them be completed on the canvas, it hints at um, the massive nature of these structures and it brings you as the viewer in where you have to share and complete the, the painting off the canvas. Mm -hmm. So that's something I really like. And by doing photographs and painting from photographs, I don't find myself overcompensating and making them the horizon straight again or the ship centered on the canvas. Mm -hmm. um, I find that kind of interesting and a lot more interesting. I understand. Uh, by the way, you have really uh, clean and neat studio. Uh, well, if this is always. <laughs> no, I had just moved into a larger studio. I was in a much smaller space, and I had just moved into a large space. So come back in about a year, and you'll you'll see yeah. it more. <laughs> you don't want to see a picture of mine because uh, you can't even walk. Yeah. <laughs> Often. But yeah, what's so neat about this studio is it's an old school building in Maine that um, was a high school where actually Louise Nevelson, um, who was a resident of Rockland, where we are, um, went to high school. And they've taken it, and it's a little bit run down, but they've taken, each one of us gets a classroom, which is perfect for a studio. And they usually are not this neat, so you can feel totally at home in them. Yeah, very nice and high ceiling and everything. Awesome. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> this is my studio at home in Tampa. Um, you're looking at the wall. You don't see the mess that's in front of oh. that. 
Um, this particular group of paintings were ones I did because since the pandemic, our city has been inundated with new people. Everybody can telecommute, so we're getting a lot of northerners moving down to Tampa. And when they're coming in, they're kind of taking over some of the houses and tearing them down. And I love the old houses with their porches where people, you know, would talk to the neighbors as they walk by with um, the clutter with, um, they're just wonderful. And so I'm trying to paint them before they disappear. And you're seeing a wall of them here. Uh, so in a sense, you um, paint, the subject of your work are more outdoor. Like yeah. houses. Yeah. Yeah, most of it is, although I did a whole series on um, restaurants. I'm from a restaurant family, mm -hmm. and I love restaurants because they represent, in some ways, um, they capture the special moments we celebrate in restaurants, and they're, they're finite. Most of them are gone after so many years, so I've been, again, maybe kind of capturing them for posterity or something, um, but those are interiors. This particular scene is from the residency I did in Vermont, one of them. Um, and if you haven't done a residency and you're watching this, this broadcast, I will tell you it's magical because particularly at Vermont, they take 50 artists and writers every month and you eat all your meals together. You have your own studio and you just have no interruptions. You can do whatever you want during that month. Um, I found it very helpful. I also found that I, you know, with these younger people that were there, they forced me to go on Facebook, they put me on Instagram, and, and that's really a great way to reach people that were not in my community. So it's very helpful. Uh, what, uh, uh, again, was port, was the major subject of you during this residency? Uh, this particular one you're looking at was when I was doing the ports of Tampa Bay. Um, and then I did five residencies at Vermont. So there were different ones during the time. Um, there was, we have an old theater in Tampa that's from the 1930s that you walk into it, Farron, and it's like you're in a Mediterranean village because even the night sky is up there. And so I did a whole series of paintings while I was in another residency there of the Tampa, um, the Tampa theater, which is a classic and an icon. Wow, interesting. Very interesting. And I, um, when I check your website and your work, I saw mostly sheep in port. I said, oh, perhaps she lives close by. <laughs> because, yeah, right. Uh, well, you're looking at my number one model here. Isn't she gorgeous? Um, yeah. This is the OIG, which is a ship that was there for about two weeks getting things done to her. But if you look at the front of the ship, there's a, on her bow, she has a helicopter pad which kind of reminds me a lot of a fascinator that we, you know, women would wear. And um, looking through the front of the ship, it's like looking through to the bones of this ship, which is very elegant. Um, this particular ship, I saw her at, um, waited in the water. As you can see, we're looking up. So we were in a power boat and waited till it got dark out. And then she starts to glow from within and it's magical. Mm -hmm. uh I mean, um, I know mostly you painted port, right? Mm. Um, I mean, and the ship are working ship rather than cruises. Right, yeah. Uh, so uh, what's the reason? You know, I mean, uh, there are uh, in a port could be cruise or like, like, you know, working ship or so on. What's the reason you choose this particular type of ship, which is I see it over and over in your work? Yeah, I think these represent working people and they also represent a link around the world. I mean, if you think about it, when we had COVID hit, um, it was the freighters, it was the cargo ships that kept us connected around the world and kept us supplied um, and, and really led to the feeling that we needed each other all around the world or we were not gonna survive this. So I just think they're tremendously important and they're things that we don't realize are there. Um, you know, I was fortunate. I met a harbor pilot and was able to go out with her on one of the ships when she took it from the docks under our Skyway Bridge and out to sea. 
And and I realized as I got onto the ship that there were, it was a Ukrainian crew that were there. So it was international, but here was this woman who was my size um, using a little laptop, taking over this big ship and taking it out to sea. And I gained immeasurable respect for that. A little bit later, you'll see a painting I did of um, Carolyn, who was the harbor pilot, descending from one of these ships. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, learning that, you know, that there's not a, a little ramp that comes out and you get off the ship. When it was time to get off the ship, um, a pilot boat comes out. You're going at 11 miles, uh, never not, so it doesn't stop. And we had to climb down a rope ladder on the side of the ship and jump off onto the power boat. It was an ex uh, exhilarating experience and could have been a deadly experience, but one I'll never forget. Yeah, in a sense, the process, like, you know, how something giant as this work. Yeah, kind of amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and how we're all interconnected through it. This one is a close-up, and again, you know, I'm, I'm a representational painter, but to me, the closer you get to anything, the more abstract it gets. This, to me, this is an anchor on a different ship, the top island, and looking at it close-up, it almost seems brutal and how it locks onto the ship when it's pulled up out of the sea. Um, wonderful to paint. Um, again, look at the angles of it. I find it so much more interesting rather than getting capturing the whole thing to capture a piece of it and let you go off to the right and finish the angle of the yellow part of the painting. Um, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, you're looking for tiny connection. Mm -hmm you know, all this tiny connection or tiny detail are important to create something or to um, a kind of um, to create that something giant or make it work. So those tiny connections right. in the angle also important. Yeah, and also like, you know, if you look close enough, I mean, look what you're, you can see, you know, if you really look and spend your time examining just this one portion of a ship, what a fascinating um, spotting of, of, of what well, to me looks like a brutal scene, almost like a George O'Keefe close up of something. Uh, <laughs> but not as beautiful as she would do it. <laughs> yeah, this is this is just as beautiful as 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 hers. Right? <laughs> you see close up and some people see, I don't know, I mean, it's private uh, um, area. Some people say just, you know, I mean, it's, uh, like right. when I'm checking your work, when I'm looking at your work, if there is no title, I wouldn't guess what this is. So then my imagination uh, fly and I create my own observation and what the topic is, right? Uh, or what you paint. The same yeah, thing as yeah. hers. If you don't uh -huh. know what this painting or what's the subject of this painting, you create your own imagination and you... Yeah. Uh, right. Another thing that I, that's maybe a little bit different about how I look at painting is I was taught these techniques where you look for the center of interest and you build up to that center of interest. I don't want to do that. I mean, I want you to be able to sit in front of one of my paintings for a long time and maybe make a viewfinder with your hand and go all around my painting. And each time you can find something to focus on so you won't get bored with this painting. Um, I don't think it should have just one area that's the most important area. I think it should be all the way around the, the painting. Um, it's a different way of looking at it. Yeah. I like the one you said your mentor mentioned about you have to paint or draw what you see or the shape you see, not the shape yeah. you are. So right. it's actually right. interesting to see how you observe it. It's based on your observation, not yeah. based on what that shape should be. Exactly. Yeah. This is the painting of the harbor pilot descending from a ship. And that's to give you a sense of what it's like to dismount from a ship when it's moving. With this, it was kind of fun because I, my, the point of view is inside the pilot boat. So you can see the glare on the left side of the painting, which is because there's a windshield there. And so it's ca capturing some of the lights from the the lights that are lighting up the ship so we could find out how where to jump down and jump off of it. Um, also, the top part you'll see is the wood frame of the inside of the ship. So you know that you're inside a pilot ship looking out 
at this very, very large freighter, which then left us and went off to Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it gives you a sense of how dangerous um, pilot, pilot pilots' lives are because they have to dismount no matter what the weather is. Um, that's the only way they can get off and jump onto a pilot boat. It's an interesting process. It's like I said, husband afterwards, you know, it was very exciting. And if I had fallen, I would have been smushed between these two boats. Yeah. And it would have been the most exciting and thrilling obituary anybody ever had. But um, it was quite an experience. And it was fun to capture it in this painting, which now is in the collection of the Harbor Pilot. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's something really uh, difficult to see. But for them, um, they are experts. They know what they do exactly. You know, for them, it's just a routine. But um, for us as observer, we know how dangerous, you know, and how yeah. the job is. So that's, that's the reason you capture the hard working. Yeah. Uh, and also, you what's fun, to, look, yeah, if you look at the angle, you know, when you talk about perspective, look at the angle of the, the diagonal that Carolyn's coming off the deck of the ship. Look at the angle of the deck. I yeah. mean, that's why I like photographs because I might have made it straight across rather than that steep angle which gives you the perspective on how large this um, subject was and then you are standing here where this railing is right exactly yeah and this also is you know this is Manhattan this is 57th street in Manhattan and again it's from done from a photograph but what I like about it is, is the crazy angles on this. Um, this is one of those giant cranes. They remind me of Jack and the Beanstalk because someone comes rumbling down these cranes. <laughs> but I, again, you know, I think if I had just been not using a photograph, but looking up, I might have tended to make the building straight. And actually, when you look up, and, and you're standing on the ground in Manhattan, they all kind of converge in their strange um, perspective. And so this is one of my favorite paintings. It's a square painting, which also cuts, makes some interesting angles because it cuts things off. And I like the way, the impact of that. Wow, interesting, very interesting to see how you capture all this angle within one, um painting so I do you mm -hmm. use a different point of perspective for uh like a painting like this yeah um and this one it's like you know even like the distance like the the um the building on the bottom left um is fascinating to have see how that came into the picture because again it's like cut off and it's yet you know, I would tend to have straightened it if I was doing it myself and not looking at an actual photograph that managed to capture the, the cutoff on it. Um, this is the, the series I'm working on right now is for a, sh a solo exhibition at the gallery that represents me in Maine. It's the Moss Galleries in Falmouth and Portland, Maine. And July 26, I have a two month solo show that opens. And what I'm trying to do with this is to paint the, the part of Maine that I live in, which is from Rockland, Maine to an island off the shore called Monhegan Island. Um, this first painting is actually of Port Clyde. And right be after I spent a week on the island, we came back to this Port Clyde's where you catch the ferry to go over to the island. And the next week there was a fire that burned up the general store. Oh. Um, it was a massive fire and I came and shot a photograph of it afterwards. And it's just, it's so upsetting because it was melted. I mean, if you look at the roof of it, it had just, it was gnarled and it had melted. And inside the window on the bottom left, um, there were three Jamie Wyeth paintings that burned up, which will never be placed it, because he had, there was, they show his work down there because the Wyeths have a very heavy presence between Port Clyde and the Farnsworth Art Museum in Rockland. Um, so in a way, I love the fact that art kind of captures um, the passing of life. You know, I mean, if you think about it, how would we have ever understood as well as we do past lives if people like Franz Halls hadn't painted what it was like in his day? 
And this will be a reminder of what used to be down in this little peninsula on Maine. Okay. So in a sense, um, so far from your painting, I think you like the difficult part of everything. You like to capture. Yeah. <laughs> I should... you know, somebody once okay. said that I, I paint the grit that starts the pearl, and I guess that's one way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a simple way, yeah. Uh, because I see the burned down building. I see the difficult climbing down. I see the... Uh -huh difficult right. angle and you know all those things which is uh, very interesting in a sense to say like you know you don't only capture the beauty but also you capture the hardship and the difficult yeah. part of everything yeah. so that's um very interesting to see like you know artists from like different artists and how they observe things and how they capture it or what they capture from one subject yeah, and for me, it's more like it's it's pulling myself in because there's so much chaos in the world right now that for me, it's kind of nice to pull my view in and look around me and see what I see and paint that rather than get caught up in the chaos of the world. Um, this one you're looking at right here is from one of my favorite restaurants in Rockland called In Good Company. And I was sitting at the bar looking at the kitchen. And this is um, one of the servers um, and, you know, if you look at what's captured here, there's that wonderful nape of the neck of a woman that is so magnificent and we captured so many times in so many paintings. Um, I just thought this was a beautiful way to capture um, just a little part of In Good Company while we were sitting at the bar. Um, I love the way she had her head her wrapped with a scarf and I think her hair was in some kind of corn rolls, which are symbolic of what what happens nowadays and how people do their hair. And I love the splashes of color that were to the left of her face. So. Mm -hmm. See, again, the angle. Yeah, the angle, you're right. There it is. There yeah. it is. Yeah, I was just, when I saw this painting, I was just looking, what you capture in this, you know? And what's the reason? So now you explain it. I really understand, like, you know, the different perspective you're looking at things you know yeah, not look, everybody can see this detail so you see the tiniest detail <laughs> yeah so, i mean look at the wonderful earring she has on um yeah. you know those are just little sparkles in the painting and and the little touches of color how nice of her to be standing in front of those colors for me yeah. uh, they're little fine patches and there's a nice black black bottom right corner where you can rest a while before you go back into some of the designs that are in this particular painting. Yeah, wow, interesting, very interesting. Yeah, this is on Monhegan Island, which if you haven't been to, it's a place where George Bellows, Rockwell Kent, I mean, all the famous artists of the turn of last century painted. And um, I was fortunate when I got there, this wonderful, gorgeous young man was standing there in front of a flag and I took a photograph of him. And then I checked with a friend of mine who's an African-American artist who paints beautiful portraits. And he gave me a hint on how to paint him. He said that, you know, in painting African-American skin, what he does is he starts with black and then pulls the light out of it. And it was amazing how how it really worked in this painting and I had never done that before um so I thank Reggie for the help on this painting wow. yeah very beautiful I see it. I I see the light and the capturing all mm -hmm. the in the painting you did a really wonderful job thank you I appreciate that this is um this is the harbor pilot's son his name is Jack and um I came across a photograph that was a detailed picture of the rendering that day God did of a hand. And I was so intrigued with it, I thought I could try to start painting some hands and um, immediately thought of, of musicians because they use their hands to produce the most beautiful sounds. And so I did this painting of Jack, who is in his 30s and will probably be a very well-known uh, trumpeteer at some point because he's magnificent in the music he creates now and he's very charismatic and so I painted the background more abstract almost like trying to capture the sound and how the colors were on the right hand side of the painting and in the top middle um, to the left there's um, a 
musician to the left of Jack, but I kind of left him in the background. Um, and this is what was the result. Mm -hmm. wow. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. These are um, another series that I'm doing that'll probably be in the show this summer. I ran out of space in my house, in my studio, because I've been painting and, you know, if you paint so many paintings, where are you gonna put them? So I started doing what I call littles. Um, and these are four by six inches. Um, they're very small canvases. Um, and what they are, they're quiet places that you can retreat to. So they're places from all around the world that I've been. This particular one is near our house in Maine. This We call them Oreo cookie cows. I wonder if you can see why. Um, but they're wonderful cows that are in this neighborhood. And I've done 47 of these littles. Um, because they don't take up any room. And I'm hoping that somebody can feel comfortable buying a bunch of them at a time or one at a time and move them around your house. And they're just they're just the right size when you're feeling concerned. You can just put your eyes on them and get calm. Mm -hmm. um, so this it's is one of them. Relaxing scenes in a sense. Um, like scene. Yeah. yeah. Um, the right. last one is this Hi. isn't a little this is a little of um clay who's a the boyfriend of my granddaughter in wales which is where he's from and he's the the homer red that you see in the, to the right in the painting is um clay as he goes into the woods in wales um i think this is a very calm painting and it now resides with his family in a little town in wales is this uh, um, part of that small series? With the... Yeah, this is part of the littles. Yeah. And uh, Laura has a beautiful website too, in, you know, um, which is capture most of her work and easy to navigate everything and all um, information and work, um, which okay. is you can find in her website. And um, so I know I wish we had more time to discuss, but um, this brings us to end of our conversation. Laura, do you have any last word or message or advice for our fellow uh, member and fellow artist? Um, you know, I think I would just say that, you know, sometimes, you know, we're talking about what it is I focus on. And I think, you know, it's kind of like the wabasabi kind of idea where there's beauty in the humble and the ordinary. And as an artist for myself and for others out there, I think bringing people's attention to the common and the ordinary can be very um, productive and helpful in bringing us more in touch with um, and being more grounded ourselves. But I thank you for including my art in this. I consider this an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I really appreciate it and I really enjoy the time. And let's finish our conversation with the word that you mentioned. Let's capture the shape we see and mm -hmm. um, see from different angle. Thank you very much and see you next month for the different for another conversation. Thank you. Thank you for your time.